Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a long time since I actually made a video and later about that, like at the end of the video, I'll tell you more about what are my plans for this channel and what am I doing as of now and what are the updates of my life and things like that. But anyway, let's just get right into this video, which is what did I read in 2017? What did I read in 2017? For those of you who follow me on Instagram and on Goodreads specifically, you guys know that I read 33 books in 2016 and it's actually a record feat because I've never read 33 books in a year in my life and it was the first time I had taken up the Goodreads book challenge. I had set the challenge as 30 books and um, I read 33. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's great. So this year I have a challenge set up on Goodreads as 40 books and that's why I am actually, you know, still working towards it. I'm almost like 9 to 10 books down. You guys can see your like these many books have been read right now. And uh, this list includes all the books I read starting from Jan 2017 till date and what am I currently reading right now. So let's jump right into it. The first book is... Tiger by the Tail by James Hadley Chase. So the genre for this particular book is crime thriller. This book is about a banker called Ken Holland who actually goes out with a prostitute for the night and the prostitute is murdered and uh, Ken is the only witness and the person who was, you know, in contact with her during her last few moments of death and that's why Ken is in a fix because everyone's going to blame him for the murder and he needs to get out of it. So that's what this book is about. The second book I read is, yes, finally I read Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami and I must say that I'm like enthralled by this author because I've heard a lot of good things about him. And let me tell you, he writes books for the intellectuals and not for animals. The genre is like fantasy and life lessons and things like that. So specifically, this is about a 15-year-old boy named Kafka Tamura who runs away from his home in Tokyo. And then he was on this adventure, uh, on this imaginative adventure of how things happen. Honestly speaking, I didn't understand the book till I reached the end of the book. And I had to go through Goodreads and Google to understand the meaning of the book. But once I understood that, I realized that, you know, this is one of those books where you just read them, close the book, and just think about it for a while. And then you're like, wow, you know, my life is complete now. So yes, highly recommended Kafka on the show. So for those of you who know my reading habits, and, uh, you know, I guess I've talked about this before uh, to quite a few people, but... Uh, I mainly go for a light book after a heavy book. So after reading Kafka on the Shore, it was difficult for me to actually like get back to reading heavy books. So I just put in like a filler book and one of the favorite series which I always um, you know, go for when it comes to light reading is the private series. And this is the second book in the private series, it's Private Number One Suspect. The reason why I like the private series is because first thing, the language is very simple. Second, the plot is also pretty intriguing and nice. And uh, it doesn't give you an overwhelming sense, you know, like after you read a kind of big book like Salman Rashid or Jhumpa Lahir, you get that, you know, that feel, you know, you go down and you're like, okay, fine, I just read the book. But books like these help you get out of that kind of slump. And this is what I love about the private series because the private series has helped me all the time. Like, a half of the private series which I have bought was simply because I was expecting it to be read by me after a kind of heavy book. So... So finally, the next book I did read was Hannibal by Thomas Harris and uh, this is the third book in the Hannibal Lecture installment which is by the same author. So the first one being Red Dragon, the second one is Silence of the Lambs and the third one is uh, Hannibal. Now, one good thing about the series is that all three books can be read as standalone books and not necessarily, you know, as like in the chronological order that they were released. Uh, I haven't read Red Dragon. I didn't read Silence of the Lambs yet, but I did watch the movie. So somewhere I knew who Hannibal Lecter was and what his background was. And that's why I decided I would take this out of my eye. <laughs> that's why I decided I would take this um, book by 
Thomas Harris the third book and let me tell you Hannibal Lecter has been one of my favorite characters all through psychological thrillers and series because uh, this was a character inspired by the famous serial killer Ted Bundy and uh, you know exploring this guy's mind Hannibal Lecter's mind is like wow like it's like crazy and let me tell you like if you have ever researched more on how Thomas Harris wrote the book he actually wrote the book with the help of FBI officers and you know all those people who were involved in the Ted Bundy case and uh, like it's it's actually intriguing lovely and dark thrilling it's gruesome but you know if you like such kind of books then you should read this for sure so after reading a dark book like hannibal i picked up this chiclet book which is called can you keep a secret by sophie kinsella now honestly speaking i wasn't expecting much from the book because my chiclet you know information like everything chiclet comes from whatpad and the reason i got introduced to this genre called chiclet is whatpad but you know i wasn't expecting much so here kudos to sophie kinsella for writing such a nice book it is a very light rom-com and uh, you will actually enjoy it if you enjoy like those whatpad books which uh, are like teenage and young adult and things like that so this one is a thumbs up in the chiclet genre and um, i actually gave it 5000 good reads and it was surprising because i normally don't give five stars to such books but then this one just touched my heart and it was it, it was a very good end and it was a very very happy book for me so the next three books i happened to read were yes guys i read the stranger trilogy like finally uh, i was actually expected to read this much before because um, i mean i actually want to read this much before okay no, no. not that people expected me to and honestly i got the chance um okay now honest uh side note i actually got the second book as a gift uh, during a christmas uh, you know secret santa a thing which was going on in my office so i could get the second book like for free but then i realized it's the second book and that's why i went ahead and got the first book this is the first book and after reading that it was like okay fine you know what i want to know the outcome so i had to buy the second book and then eventually after the second book i went for the third book now if you see my liking i didn't like the first book the first book sucks the language sucks and suddenly there is a woman who is talking to a stranger and i couldn't just digest that fact but you know the, the la this book ends in a cliffhanger and it makes you want to buy the second book and let me tell you the second book is the best in the series just because it solves the cliff cliffhanger and it's much better written it's not slow the plot points are good and that's why you know the second book and the third book are much 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 better than the first book the first book sucks okay I'm sorry, Novini, but the first book sucks. But the next two books, they're nice. You know, commendable. So the next book I read was *Degree of Guilt* by Richard North Patterson. If you are a John Grisham fan, let me tell you, just forget John Grisham and start reading this guy because I find Richard Patterson much more better than John Grisham, and this is one of the best love thrillers like ever. And uh, one suggestion would be that if you want to start reading the Christopher Paget series by Richard Patterson, that is, this is the second book. Start from the first book because I had trouble understanding a few references in the second book, which were then the first book. So you should read the first book, such that you do the second book, and that that's that. But this this book is specifically about uh, Mary uh, Mary Corelli. She is a TV presenter. and um, she is basically accused of killing mark ransom a famous american author and what she claimed was that mark ransom was trying to sexually assault her so that's when uh, her you know ex you can say christopher paget the famous public defendant uh, defender comes in and you know sets up a case for her and this is a, this book is a roller coaster it's basically everything you want to feel in a love thriller including emotions the crime the thrilling part and even lies so this is one of the best or the best love thrillers ever out there so continuing my women centric women centric plot with women as the center central characters and 
you know, the, the dark psychological part and things like that. For example, Girl on, on the Train is a book like that, FYI. Uh, I took this one up. It's called Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. This is somewhat like Gone Girl meets Girl on the Train and, you know, of many of these women-centric psychological thriller books put together. This is, a, I, I'm actually just halfway to the book. You can see the bookmark. This book is actually huge. I just realized it right now. But anyway, this is about Claire Scott and Lydia, who are sisters, and their eldest sister, had Julia, had gone missing, you know, many years back, and how Julia Julia's disappearance affected their family, and it broke their family down. And I haven't, like, completed the book, so I don't know how will this book turn out to be, but I'm expecting this to be very nice, because the star itself is very intriguing and very nice, so high hopes from this one. So the next book I'm reading uh, side by side with this one currently reading is Study Women in Power, Their Voices and the Stories by Nana Lal Kidwai. Uh, Nana Lal Kidwai was the CEO of HSBC Bank and uh, she has curated over um, like about 30 stories from 30 women at high posts in different companies and uh, different uh, board meetings and how they had to overcome many obstacles like the glass ceiling, work-life balance and things like that in order to survive in the corporate world. And this is a book that will help me because I am in the corporate world and stories like these actually inspire me a lot. And uh, this is a non-fiction, I'm kind of almost done. Okay, these many is left. Uh, by the way, this is like a magnetic bookmark later on that one. So this is how much that, that's left and I'm planning to complete this like pretty soon because when you read non-fiction you need to you know just give all of it in and you know immerse in the story because it's a true story so things like that and yeah okay, so there you go I'm just gonna twist this book stuff actually so these are actually all the books I read in 2017 till date so if you want a detailed review of all the books I showed you here, it's there on my Goodreads. My Goodreads will be linked somewhere here and it's even there in the description box below. The next thing, obviously, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram because that's where most of the you know, currently reading books come in and uh, where I actually post a lot about my art, about what am I doing currently and all that kind of assorted stuff. So yes, all the links are in the description and somewhere here and around. I'll just like note it down. I hope I note it down. Seriously. Okay. So that's that. So now that we are done with the video business, let's get back to my channel. Yes. Okay. So it's been a very long time that I actually made a video and I realized it. But in my defense, I have been very busy and you guys have no idea how busy have I been. And I'm not boasting, like you guys can see my Instagram and you know, like I hardly even post on Instagram. It's like been two weeks that I actually post on Instagram and my weekends are busy too. So what is actually happening with me are a couple of things. A couple of things, yeah, right. The first thing is that uh, I've been working. So Monday to Friday I'm at work. And Saturday, Sunday is the only time when I get to make videos and that's again time consuming because making a video actually, you know, in literally it takes six hours, okay? So you film the video, you edit the video, you put music in the video, you cut the video, you put text in the video, you do this, you do that. It's like easily it takes like six hours of your time and I kind of do have a life outside of this little box you are seeing right now. Not that I hate the box, even I'm addicted to this little box YouTube. So yeah, like it's difficult managing time. But you know what? Now I have actually promised myself that I will make videos like kind of every week. Like upload videos at least once in two weeks, if that's okay, because we all have our busy schedules and we all should be managing time and prioritizing our work and you know just getting it done. We all dream, don't we? We all dream. Yeah. <sighs> so the second topic I want to touch is what am I planning for the channel? So as you guys know, this channel has specifically concentrated on art and lifestyle. If you see my previous videos, I have a lot of art and lifestyle videos. 
and I used to have like one book video but what I realized was this that you know as time has gone by I have concentrated more on books in my real life like I said you know I read 33 books and things like that so I have been writing and reading a lot more than doing my art work or my lifestyle work and things like that so what I have in, on my mind is of course a booktube counterpart on this channel but also an art based counterpart now the problem with art is that art videos take a lot of time because you need to sit plan make if it goes wrong you make again and more importantly you need equipment you need supporting equipment because art videos are like shot on like a vertical scale it's like the camera should point down to what are you doing on the table or on the floor so that's what is the problem with art videos but you know what I'm working around it so that's a good thing hopefully we'll have an art video by next month uh, the other thing is lifestyle so uh, yes I am investing in a lot of lifestyle like I do get the fat bag every month but other than that um, other than that like all my lifestyle is more like mental development and organizing and prioritizing and being like motivated to do things get things done so yes I'm planning to add those type of videos into the lifestyle genre genre on this channel um, but as of now like in the long run what I'm planning for this is a booktube channel and uh, less of art and less of lifestyle and the reason why I have decided on this is because on a personal level I am a writer and a reader so a booktube is a much better mechanism for me to tell you you know I can tell you how to read more books I can tell you how can you read fast I can even tell you how do you read like I've finished like 10 books this year and how did I do that so all these kind of videos are coming up but nevertheless art and lifestyle will still be a part of this channel no matter what although I'll be concentrating more on books now because that's what's going on in my life and well, that's what I feel is best for this channel so if you have like any suggestions any suggestion videos or any kind of complaint suggestions do put in the comments below you can just like message me on YouTube and things like that or you can email me you know I have like the email ID of mine given in the box below you can go just check it out or something so yeah, like that's all as of now and uh, I hope you have like an amazing week ahead and yeah, see you guys in the next video. Bye!